Now here's something cool I've never seen before. Cactus, you can grow cactus from seed. Oh my gosh, look at this one. <gasps> How pretty is that? I just noticed is that they have some sweet peas and I actually have never grown sweet peas before. Look at this variety too, Magic Roundabout. So pretty, I love the color on that. You snap the edges and it makes it really it is easy. a solar powered hummingbird feeder. I actually bought this one last year. That's what they look like outside the box. Now this is a two pound container and just recently I was over at Lowe's and these were about $18.98. And here, th Hi, it's Steph. And while it's a rainy, cold winter day outside, we are thinking spring. So let's take a look at all of the seed starting supplies as well as some really cool seeds that I found here at Walmart. Now here's a cool item that I actually purchased last year. It's these Burpee pop-out reusable seed starting trays. I had purchased about three or four of these here in this size, the 16 extra large cell pack. Um, and what I really liked about these is that they are reusable. Unlike those black plastic ones that you buy that sometimes will break when you pop out your seedlings, um, these are more sturdy because of this hard plastic, but they also have these rubber silicone bottoms that makes it really easy to pop out your seedling without disturbing this, uh, the roots too much so I thought this was really great you can see here how that works um, so these are a really good product they have the 36 cell so the cells themselves are a bit smaller and then they have this one here that has 16 and this is the one that I bought I like that they're a little bit bigger which means I can leave them in here longer without having to repot them so the 36 cell is it looks like let's see $11.97 they're both $11.97 so whether you get the 36 or the 16 11.97. The 18 count three inch round fiber pots are 4.88 for a pack of 18. Now these are eco-friendly. They say that they will break down in the ground when you plant them so that you don't have to uh, take them out. See, it says right here, transplant directly into your garden. Let me know if you've used these before and what your thoughts are. I have used these type of planters before and I didn't love them because they, maybe I overwatered them. They would start getting moldy on the outside. Um, so I wasn't a fan, but it could be that they're improved now and it could very well be that I was just doing something wrong some grow pellets. Now some people prefer to use these over getting some seed starting mix or potting soil because these are just easier in, in most cases. You just take one of these, soak them in some water and they will expand and then you plant your seed into them. So they have a burpee eco-friendly 72 count and they are 397. The greenhouse kits here come with your black seed starting tray as well as the humidity dome and you get 25 peat pellets. The same idea, you put water in them, they will expand and then you plant your seed into them and you keep this humidity dome on them until your seeds germinate and then you take them off and um, keep them under the light. So these here hold, it has 25 pellets, so that would be 25 seed starts for $9.97. Here's the 72 cell seed starting system. These also have those little um, pellets in them. Those are 19 97 and look at this they have some perennial wildflower seed mix now what I like about these is that it says it's perennial so if you have a field that you want to just sprinkle some of these on you will have perennials that will come back year after year instead of say something like an annual mix that you would have to throw down each year it says it covers up to a thousand square feet there are 50,000 seeds in this pack and these are let's see 897 here are those plastic trays that I was talking about. Now in this one, you're getting the, um, the seed tray, the humidity dome, and then the water catching tray underneath. Um, and these are $5.97. The thing with these is that their plastic is usually pretty flimsy. So you might get one season out of it. And if you're careful, you might get a second, but that's why I was liking those burpee trays. Cause I felt like they were a little more substantial and will last a longer amount of time getting more use out of them. So $5.97 for these. And then they have this one below, which you can um, see our larger pot. So this is actually great because it would prevent you from having to repot them too many times, especially for things like tomatoes and peppers that you can't put out until you know all chance of frost has passed. This is the large pot seed starter. You get 18 of them. And let's see how much this one is. 588 on this one. 
Here's another mix by Burpee. This one here says perennial, but when I look at the picture, I'm mostly seeing annuals. You can see there, there, there are some zinnias, and zinnias are an annual. Um, some butterfly weed, maybe some bachelor buttons. So these here, if you were to plant them, there's a likelihood that there might be a couple of perennials in here. For the most part, these look like annuals that would grow for you this year and not come back next year. There are some Burpee plant clips. Um, here, how many do you get? A 10 pack, and they're $3.97. I've seen similar ones at the Dollar Tree too, so another place that you can check for those. I'm happy to report that the Jiffy Natural Organic Seed Starting Mix is still $5.97, which is the same price it was last year. Now, if you're new to growing seeds, something to keep in mind about seed starting mix is that this soil is only good for your seed to germinate. So this is a really light soil and it will be really easy for seeds to germinate. However, once they have germinated and start putting on a little bit of size, it will be time to transplant them out of the seed starting mix into something like a potting mix that has more nutrients to keep your seedling happy and growing. Here's a really pretty zinnia mix by Burpee. This one is called the Cut and Come Again Mixed Colors. These are an annual for $1.96. And now here is that mix that we were looking at. You see the resemblance? Zinnia, zinnia. Those are labeled perennial. These are labeled correctly as an annual. These are beautiful. And Cut and Come Again just means that as these bloom and you cut on these blooms, the plant will continue to produce even more blooms. So anytime that you have an annual, keep cutting on it. It'll keep producing blooms until your first frost. This is a really popular tomato variety, a cherry tomato, the Super Sweet 100 Hybrid, Tala 64. And the back of the seed packets will give you all the information that you need to grow these seeds. It'll give you information about the type of seed. So it says that it's a deliciously sweet cherry type fruit and prolific long multiple branched clusters, indeterminate. So indeterminate tomatoes will continue to grow and grow and grow and get really, really tall. And determinate will get to a certain height and then stop setting fruit and stop growing. Things like radishes, carrots, beets, root vegetables, they like the cool temperature. So in the spring, as soon as you can work your soil, you can direct sow these seeds right into your vegetable garden um, and they will do just great. Radishes are a great thing to grow even with kids because look at that, 22 days to harvest. In about a month, you can go from seed to vegetable in your salad. Now they have an end cap here with all organic seeds. These are USDA organic for $2.46. And it looks like they're mostly vegetable seeds. The planters are starting to roll in. They have these pretty white planters with almost like a terracotta color at the bottom. They are plastic, which makes them lightweight and they are $25.98. Now I am finding that they have some really pretty flower seeds. I ordered a bunch recently online, but if I hadn't, there are quite a few really beautiful packs and some different and unique varieties that I'd never seen before at Walmart or at the box stores that I would certainly pick up. So let me go ahead and share some of those really pretty ones with you. Let's start with some zinnias. I actually bought this year the Benary's Giant Salmon Rose, which is very similar in appearance to this. Look how pretty that is. It says it's 80 days to bloom. It's a top breed, loved by pollinators. These are $1.96, you're getting 540 milligrams here. And zinnias is something that you can either start from seed indoor, four to six weeks before your last frost date. See how it says that right there? Or you can actually direct sow them right into your garden. All you have to do is scratch the soil to rough it up, sprinkle your seeds, pat them in nice and firm into the soil, but don't cover them and lightly mist them with water. And in a few weeks, you'll have some beautiful zinnia plants. So this is a real pretty one, the zinnia coral. And then there was a couple of other really pretty ones here too. Look at this one here. Hey, this is a giant double flowered canary bird zinnia. You get a little bit less seeds in this one. It looks like you get 450 milligrams and they are $1.96. 60 days to bloom on this one. This is a pretty mix. This is the giant cactus and you can see that the style of the petals are a little bit different. They're actually a little bit frilly instead of that style there. So these would look pretty mixed together. Talking about reds, look at this red one, the double scarlet flame. That is really, really pretty. I'm coming around on the reds and oranges and yellows. This one here I grew in my garden last year. It is stunning. It starts with this really pretty pink and then it fades to a lighter pink. It's absolutely gorgeous. And they're super large. They don't get too tall, about three feet. Yeah, 24 to 36 inches in height. But they have a really pretty large bloom. Um, oh my gosh, look at this one. <gasps> How pretty is that? 
Meteor Zinnia. Gets to be, let's see, 30 inches in height, so two and a half feet. That is stunning. So some really, really pretty varieties. So if you don't like to order um, seed packets online, maybe because of the shipping, or you just prefer to read the seed packets and see them in store, there's some really good ones to pick here. The California Giants mix. It's a pretty one too. And if you want to grow some zinnias in containers, look at this one, the Zinnia Mini Zinni uh, Mixture. Mini Zinni, look at that. And how many do you get? 480 milligrams, they're $1.96 says it will fit in an 18 inch plus pot. Now the larger the pot, the more soil it will contain, which means it'll retain more moisture, which will involve less watering on your part. Um, and they make for a really pretty display when they're larger. They like full sun. And these here are only 10 to 24 inches in height. You wanna space them about 12 inches apart. So if you have say a 20 inch, 24 inch planter, you can probably get two, maybe squeeze three plants in there. But that looks like a really pretty mix for containers or even window boxes. We're going to move on to some pretty sunflowers. But I also grew this variety of zinnia, the Envy. And it's a real pretty, like, light, limey green. The blooms weren't as big. Um, they were also pretty tall, 3 to 4 feet. Well, it says 24 to 36 inches. But I recall the blooms being a little smaller, but they had a really pretty color to them. And some really pretty sunflowers. Look at this one. It's a pretty orange color. It's called Red Sun. Says it's a non-GMO seed, 75 days to bloom. And let's see, these are five feet tall. That's the thing I look at when I'm looking at sunflowers. I wanna make sure that they don't get too tall. Um, I don't like the ones that get 10 to 12 feet tall. While they are really pretty, I find that the canes or the stems on them get really hard and then it's really difficult to pull them out and dispose of them at the end of the season. So I prefer the ones that stay about five feet tall. Plus they require less staking. Look at this variety too, Magic Roundabout. So pretty. It looks like a fluffy one. It almost looks like it has double petaling, huh? Wow. How tall does this one get? Six feet tall. That's not too bad. Five to six feet, I would say, would be a good cutoff. I'll make exceptions for pretty varieties. I did try growing this one before, the Italian white, and I thought it was going to be a white sunflower, and it ended up being yellow. So it could have just been the pack that I had. But let me know, have you grown Italian white before, and did it turn out this color? A creamy white with a little bit of yellow around the center. This one says it's 90 days to bloom, so a little longer than the others. The other thing to keep in mind about these is that some sunflower varieties are single stem while some of them are branching. Let's see what this one is. Um, I want to say this one is a branching variety. It gets to be five feet tall. And what's good about the branching ones is that you get multiple flowers off of one stem instead of the ones that are single, like a pro cut series where you get one flower, you cut it, and then it's done. Mammoth Russian. These mammoth varieties are the ones that get super tall. So look at that one. 75 days to bloom. They are beautiful and you get lots of seeds for the bird friends. But let's see how big this one gets. 7 to 12 feet in height. But I'll tell you, these do make a statement though. Another pretty one that looks like it has a double petal. This one is called Moonshine. Creamy yellow looking bloom. This one I grew last year too. It's real cute. The Teddy Bear. This is a dwarf one so it doesn't get too tall. Let's see, three feet, tops off at three feet tall, 75 to 90 days to bloom. And look at that, it's very different. Almost looks like a marigold. And here's one that would be really great for a container. This one's called Dwarf Incredible Sunflower. Real cute, 75 days to bloom. And this one only gets to be about two feet tall. Again, these you wanna either start inside about four weeks before your last frost date, or you can direct sow them right into the garden once any chance of frost has passed for your gardening zone. Here's another dwarf variety. This one's called Dwarf Sunspot. So lots more um, options in terms of the dwarf sunflowers these days, which is great. This one, 24 inches. So another one that would be great for container growing. Evening Sun, another really pretty one that has all of these orange and red sunset colors. $1.44 for this one, 80 days to bloom. Six feet in height. Another beauty that I've grown before, this one. I've grown Strawberry Blonde, which is very similar, and this Ruby Eclipse. I love how it has this really pretty color around the center with the creamy outer petals. That's a real beauty. And this one gets to be five to six feet in height. And it says here that it's a branching variety, producing an abundance of ruby red and lemon yellow tipped blooms up to 10 inches across. 
Now here's a type of sunflower that's actually called the Mexican sunflower or Tithonia. And this, you get multiple flowers, you get lots and lots of flowers. It's a branching type plant, very similar in growth habit to say something like a Rudbeckia, where you get multiple flowers, but it gets a lot bigger. It's pretty wild looking. Um, so it would be great in some, like a cottage garden or somewhere with wildflowers. They get to be three to five feet in height. And I wanna say probably about the same, of at least three feet in width really pretty pollinators absolutely go crazy for these what i just noticed is that they have some sweet peas and i actually have never grown sweet peas before but i might pick up a pack of these to give them a shot look how pretty this one is looks like a salmon it's called mammoth salmon cream how long do these take to bloom 65 days and i think that these go out a little bit sooner so these are probably a spring um, planted type flower if you know comment below. It would be my first time trying these, but I'm going to go ahead and pick up a pack of sweet peas and give them a go. I hear that these smell really wonderful. A few other mixes that they have. The early Gigante mix, 50 days to bloom on that one. Now I don't know if I want a mix or a solid color. Look at this one. The sweet pea early Spencer mix. That one looks really pretty too. These are about $1.96 all of these here. Here is an heirloom mix. And then this one's real pretty too. It's kind of a faint color. This actually looks like the color that my sweet peas that you eat, the sugar snap peas, this looks like the color of the blooms there. This one's high pea, uh, sweet pea, high scent. Thunbergia, black-eyed Susan. This isn't the traditional black-eyed Susan. This is a vining type. I've grown these before too. I grew a variety that had a bit of a salmon color to them, uh, but these are a great trailer. They take a little while to get going, so I would say to start these early. It says they get to be six to eight feet tall, so give them something to climb. Maybe plant them at the base of a fence or up a trellis, but they are really pretty. Some candy cane striped zinnias. Let's see how big these get. 18 to 24 inches, so another variety that would be great in a container. $1.96 for these, 60 days to bloom. They have some dahlia mixes. These are seed dahlia. So unlike the dahlias that you buy that have tubers, um, a lot of people find that these are a lot easier to grow. And these here get to be, let's see how tall. These are 45 inches in height, so up to four feet in height. And you never know what you're going to get because it's a mix. This one's called the Dahlia Pom Pom Mix. So it looks like the blooms will be pom poms, but it'll be in a variety of colors. 70 days to bloom. And this one, the Pom Pom Mix. They have a couple of other ones here. Let's see. This one is the Rainbow Mixed Colors. And this one has a height of 18 inches, so this would even be good to try in a container. And then there is this one, which is the Dwarf Double Mix. 25 inches in height, so another one that would work for containers. And it tells you in the corner, container variety. Pollinators also love these. And the other good thing about these is if you grow dahlias, um, you know, which I do grow them, the tubers, if you live in a zone that's a bit cold, like I live in a zone six, it can be a little bit of work in the fall to dig up those tubers and store them for winter because they are not frost tolerant. If you left them in the ground, they would freeze and rot. So um, the seed dahlias are a good option to try so that you don't have to worry about that. And look at this, some Cosmos, Sensation Picotee. I love Cosmos. They remind me of my grandmother. She used to always have packets of Cosmos in her pockets and sew them every spring. So they remind me so much of her. This is a pretty variety. It says container variety and 48 inches in height. Some forget-me-nots. These look really pretty in the spring, um, but I'm guessing that you would have to start these the year before in order to get spring blooms because otherwise, unless you start them inside. For early, early blooms, start indoors or after all danger of frost has passed when plants are two inches high, thin or transplant. These are 15 to 18 inches in height. But what I was gonna say is these look really pretty mixed in with things like daffodils and tulips. Really pretty spring bloomer. Um, I have heard that they can get a little aggressive. You know, they'll self-seed a bit, so something to keep in mind. Some cool gourds. These are pretty. You can grow these. They're not too big. Then you can use them for your fall decor. They're like a vine, though, like pumpkins, so you'd have to give them a little bit of space for the plant to grow. Yeah, and hollyhocks. Hollyhocks are beautiful, quintessential cottage garden type flower. Uh, the only thing is that they are susceptible to some rust on the foliage, so they can be a little bit difficult uh, to grow. 
but real pretty nonetheless. Really fluffy, beautiful bloom. Now most of these are annuals. If a plant is an annual, it only grows for you one year. It does all of its growing in one year. When the first frost comes, it is done. Its life cycle is done. Anything that is a perennial will usually the first year it'll work on foliage and root development and then it'll come back for you the second year. Talk about invasive plants. This is another one that you might end up finding in your lawn if you plant it out in your garden, but they make great container plants. These are the Johnny, Johnny Jump Ups. Um, they're called violas or violas, six to 10 inches in height. Great spring flowers. Some marigolds, dwarf bolero, champion, crack -a jack mix, dainty marionetta. Oh, look at this one, Eskimo. I've grown an Eskimo variety before, really pretty. Uh, it looks a little more creamy yellow than it does white, in my opinion, but still really pretty and different than the orange. This one gets to be 12 to 18 inches in height. And let's see what else they have here. Ah, so here's an example of some perennials. So this here, is the purpurea, Echinacea purpurea, the traditional cone flower. It's beautiful. I grew these from seed before and I've had them ever since. The first year I just got foliage and then year two onward, I've been getting beautiful blooms. The pollinators absolutely love them and they're really easy to grow from seed. 30 to 42 inches in height. And this is the native variety. Lupin is another one that's also a really good uh, plant that you can use with winter sowing. These have done really well for me with winter sowing. I had a beautiful show of Lupin a couple of years ago in the spring and how beautiful they were with iris, mixed in with iris. Gorgeous. These get to be 30 to 42 inches in height. And the foliage on Lupin is also really beautiful because they hold water. What else do they have here? Delphiniums. Now, delphiniums I have found to be a little bit difficult to grow. These are the Magic Fountains mix. Um, they do benefit from a cold stratification before you sow the seeds. So if you were to buy this pack of seeds, throw them in the freezer for two to three weeks, and then go ahead and get them started and they'll germinate a lot better after they've had a cold treatment. Another perennial plant them once and have them every year thereafter is Black Eyed Susan, Rudbeckia. So you can see here, it's a pollinator attractor. These get to be 24 to 36 inches in height. Really pretty. And they're later in the summer. So they bloom for me in my garden, usually around end of July, beginning of August. And they will persist sometimes through September if I regularly deadhead them. Deadheading just means taking off the spent blooms. So once they're done blooming, you cut down the stem, remove it, and the plant will keep producing some additional blooms. Another perennial is blanket flower, or Gagliarda, I believe it's called, Gilardia. And this one here is only 24 to 30 inches in height. Also has pretty shades of yellow and orange. Now here's something cool I've never seen before, cactus. You can grow cactus from seed. Isn't that wild? That'd be something fun to try. Maiden pinks, these are another type of perennial that you can grow from seed. I've grown some of these from seed. Um, I just ended up taking them out and giving them away because I thought they were a little messy and I didn't prefer them uh, from seed, but they, you know, they are one that you can grow from seed. If you have a cottage style garden, they might look pretty against the front of a border because they only get to be six to 12 inches in height. I've also grown some of this from seed, the Blue Ornamental Grass Blue Fescue. I found this one, um, it was a little bit straggly. I don't know exactly how to explain it. It was tall, but it wasn't short and bushy like this. I found that it got just really um, a bit taller than I expected it to. So I didn't love it, but it did grow well from seed, I have to say. Um, I think that bunnies like to eat this as well. So Blue Fescue here, it gets to be eight to 12 inches in height. I found that it got a little bit taller than that for me. Um, and I didn't like it very much, but if you wanna try growing Blue Fescue from seed, here is a pack of seeds that you can try. And we're gonna go over just a couple more really cool flowers that I have experience with. Um, let's see, the alyssum. So I've grown alyssum quite a bit and it is so easy to grow and great. It has a little bit of a fragrance. And this is the variety that I've had the most success with, the carpet of snow. Although last year I did grow the um, royal carpet, which is purple. Here's a pastel mix. And this is the royal carpet. The picture looks pink, but it was actually a bit more purple. 
and these grow really easily. These are great for either the front of a border or even to trail on your containers. I've grown them as trailers and they do really well. And if these start to get too leggy, similar to petunias, you would just shear them back and then they would start growing um, bushier again. So here's some coleus. Now coleus is a plant that likes shade. It's a foliage plant. So see all these beautiful colors that you get, but they do send up some bloom stalks. And when they start sending up some blue stalk, bloom stalks, you can just pinch them right off because you wanna keep the plant producing nice bushy foliage. And if you start letting those blooms come up, then the plant will start producing seed and it won't be as um, vigorous. So these here take a really long time to get going. So you want to start them indoors probably 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost date. The seeds are also super tiny. So if you put them in a little bowl and you use a toothpick that you dip in water and then dip them into the bowl to pick up your seed, it'll be a lot easier for you to sow these. But really great plant to start from seed. $1.96, you get a bunch of them in here and some really pretty colors. Let's check out some really pretty Cosmos. They have this dwarf sensation mix. So dwarf usually indicates it's gonna be a little bit um, shorter in height. So this one here is 24 inches. And there's also, let's see, quite a few here. The white ones, I've actually grown these. This one's called Purity. Um, I've grown the Sonoma white and they are really pretty and they don't get too, too tall. So 36 inches, which is good because they're less likely to get knocked over in the wind. You won't have to stake them. So that is a real pretty white one. And there's also this one here that looks like the seashells variety. And the seashells variety has more of a frilly petal, almost like a rolled petal really pretty as well. And these get to be three to five feet in height. And what's this one here? Sen more sensational mix. This is a pr pretty one. It's like a magenta color. It's called Dazzler. 36 inches in height. Here is one that looks like it's a cool, not a cool, a warm color mix with oranges and yellows. It's called Crest Mixed Colors. 18 to 24 inches in height, so these would be good for containers. This is a real pretty one. This one's called Candy Stripe. And it gets to be 36 to 60 inches in height. Beautiful also for cottage gardens. But I already bought more seeds than I need to grow this year <laughs> because I'm always overzealous when I start seeing all of these and then you run out of room. But you know, it's always very tempting when you're a gardener. This one here, Cleome Queen Rose is also another really pretty annual cottage gardens pollinators love them they have kind of a spidery appearance come in lots of different colors pinks whites purples they get to be four feet in height so if you are not a person who likes to seed start inside you can certainly plant most of these outside once any chance of frost has passed it would just be important to know what gardening zone you're gardening in so that you know when that date would be and you can just do a quick google search to figure that out here are some morning glories. These are another plant that can be pretty invasive. So if you wanna grow one of these, they're real pretty because they're a vining type flower. You can, a lot of people, I have a coworker who likes to grow these up a telephone pole in the front by her mailbox. Um, and they're real pretty, but they can get a little bit aggressive. So just something to keep in mind. They almost look like a petunia. And let's see how tall this one gets. It says 10 to 12 feet in height. Another really cool looking uh, flower that's similar to that is this variety here, the Moonflower Evening Glory. They get really big um, blooms. These look pretty, say, along a fence even. They have some Achillea or Yarrow. These are pelleted seeds, which pelleted seeds make it really helpful to be able to sow your seeds. They make them a little more substantial, which definitely makes them easier to sow. These get to be 20 to 30 inches in height. And here is another annual that I have lots of experience with. It's nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are also an edible plant. A lot of times in a fancier restaurant, you'll see these used as garnish or in salads. Um, and they're so easy to grow. Now, one thing about nasturtium is that they do like cooler temperatures. So they sometimes peter out in the heat of the summer, but if you keep them in a part shade location, they tend to do a little bit better. This variety is real pretty. It's called Peach Melba and it says it can be grown in containers. Now they have really pretty foliage too. They almost look like little lily pads, um, real pretty. So this one here gets to be 12 to 18 inches in height. There are some varieties of nasturtium that are trailers. So if you look at the um, size that they grow in terms of height, that will be able to tell you whether they're a trailer or not. But this is a real pretty one. It looks almost like a peachy yellow color with a little bit of a red or orange splash in the center. 
And then this one here is the tall single mixed colors. Let's see, this one here gets to be five feet tall. So this one here, I would say is a vining or trailer. And then there is the dwarf jewel mixed color and the gleam mix but a really easy plant to start the seeds are really large and sometimes they're a little bit hard so you can either nick them with like a nail file um, or soak them for overnight or something before you sow them and it'll help that hard shell break down a bit snapdragons another cool season flower they prefer the cooler temperatures of spring and fall and will peter out a bit during the summer i actually haven't had luck growing snapdragons because i think i always sow them too late so by the time they get going in the garden it heats up real fast and they just don't ever do much for me um, I suppose if I started them indoors it could help but snapdragons are a beautiful cut flower nice tall spiky flower I do have videos on my channel about winter sowing which is a great method for growing seeds so if you don't want to grow seeds indoors because you don't have grow lights or space to do that check out my winter sowing playlist on my channel now while I grow lots of flowers I also love to grow vegetables and herbs basil and cilantro parsley and so forth but if you want a herb that flowers chives is a great option and not only do they flower and have really pretty they almost look they're part of the allium family because they're onions right they get these really pretty blooms in late mid to late spring but they also are perennial so if you plant chive seeds once you will get chives for years to come so a really good one a really good herb to have in the garden it flowers and comes back year after year now here's an herb that is overzealous and can really take over a space. So if you wanna grow spearmint or mint, because maybe you like to make mojitos, um, I would say to plant these in a pot or some kind of planter. That would be your best bet for mint. Here is another perennial type herb, and that is oregano. Oregano is a great one. It comes back year after year. I've only planted it once. Another one that's like that is sage. So there are quite a few herbs that can be perennial in your garden, depending where you're growing. Lavender is also an herb, but has a beautiful bloom and a wonderful fragrance. Really easy to grow from seed, at least in my opinion. I've had good luck growing it from seed. So give it a shot if you wanna try some lavender. I should say that there are different varieties of lavender and I would guess that some are easier to grow than others. I actually grew a variety of English lavender called Munstead and I even have it planted in a bed that stays a bit more moist and it's handled it quite well where lavender typically likes a dry, well-draining soil in a full sun location. Um, but they do only live, they're probably a short-lived perennial living maybe anywhere from three to five years. Some varieties maybe a little bit less, but I think they're worth the trouble. They're putting out all of their gardening supplies. Here are some of the sprays that you can use in the garden for insecticides. There is, these are the natural type things like that Bonide makes. I've used Rose RX before on my roses and it does really well. 624 for that. That's actually not a bad price. 16 ounce container. It takes care of things like aphids, white flies, powdery mildew, and spider mites. And then there's some neem oil. This looks like the concentrate, makes up to 10 gallons, and that is $12.96. Or you can get the pre-made stuff, 16 ounces for $7.24. Some other really great products that I've also used, the BT, controls worms and caterpillars on fruits, vegetables, ornamentals, $7.22. Copper fungicide, I've used on my roses before for black spot. It also takes care of powdery mildew and early blight. 566 for that. These are all 16, in spot, uh, 16 ounce bottles. You have insecticidal soap. This takes care of white fly, spider mites, scale, aphids, thrips. This one here is the dead bug, which I've also used. Kills bagworms, borers, and beetles. Good for organic gardening. And that is 824. And this is um, a powdered form, it looks like. No, actually, it's just a uh, concentrate that you would mix into a sprayer with some water. The concentrate is $14.77, but you get quite a bit more. You just have to mix it yourself. And some other items here, you get an indoor gardening mat. This is awesome. I've actually um, recently bought one of these. I bought mine on Amazon, but look at that. You can pick one up here. You snap the edges and it makes it really easy to contain your soil and your mass when you're repotting any indoor house plant. Or even if you're doing planters outside, smaller ones, you can work on this mat. It's like a canvas material. And 4.97 for that, a bulb planter 
Pretty soon we're going to be seeing all of the um, lily bulbs for the summer. That would be good to use for that. What is this here? It looks like it's a herb tool set and some other hand tools. Some snips, some pruners. They also have some fiskers. My husband got me one of these for my birthday a couple years ago, a little fiskers herb snip. That's $10.97. And then they have the hand tools here. Now I don't see the tool that I love, but it is a, they call it a cultivator. I actually bought my cultivator here. I have two of them, two or three of them, and I love them. There's like a flat hoe on one side and a little rake on the other, and it's really great to dig in soil, especially if you have rocky soil like I do. But all of the gardening supplies are starting to roll in here at Walmart, and it is so exciting. Only about 50 some days left until spring. While I do enjoy the rest of winter, I think we've gotten into that stretch now where every day is just cold and gray and I'm really craving the sunshine and warmth. Look at this right here. This is a really cool watering can. I love the color on that. The green one there is $9.97 and it's a little bit smaller. And then that larger terracotta colored one for $14.97. And then they have some plastic ones as well that are a little more affordable. This one here, it says it's for indoor and outdoor. I like that it has a really long spigot. Makes it really easy to water. $2.97 for that. Not and you can never have enough watering cans. Look at these large ones here. They're plastic, pretty shade of sage green, $4.97. Some shovels and some rakes by their house brand, Expert Gardener. There are some spades and some round point shovels. And here's something that I bought for the first time, maybe two seasons ago. It's a shrub, um, a shrub rake. And what's really great about this is this is really useful for mulching around shrubs. It's great because it's small. It can get in some really small spaces and is really helpful. And this shrub rake here is $9.44. Look at this pretty hummingbird feeder. It is a solar powered hummingbird feeder. It looks like it's two tiered, easy fill and clean, solar powered. That is so pretty, decorative dual use basket. So it looks like you could sit it on a table too if you wanted to. And how much is this? $25.84. And then there are the traditional red ones. Red is said to be a color that hummingbirds are attracted to. The center button on this is plastic, which is great because the one that I had was metal and after two seasons it started to rust and I would clean it with a little brush and get it really clean, but I just got rid of it for that reason and I'm gonna pick up one like these that has plastic in the center so that that doesn't continue to happen. But I love my little hummy friends and they usually show up for me sometime around May. That's a really pretty one. Looks like a blown glass. And these are, let's see, $24.87 for that one and $18.92 for this one. Look at these cute little ones. It's like a mason jar type style. And these are $7.48. Looks like it comes with extra tips too inside the jar. They have some hummingbird nectar in stock as well to go with the hummingbird feeders. I'm actually happy to see that they have a clear nectar this year. I know that they make the red so that it's easier for the hummingbirds to spot. And it says it's colored with natural red carmine, um, but I just feel like if you're gonna buy the pre-made stuff, then maybe the clear would be a better choice. It looks like it's $11.98 for the larger container, $5.48 for the smaller or you can just make some at home. I make my own hummingbird nectar. Um, obviously have lots of flowers around for them is ideal, but if you wanna put up a feeder, I make some with a quarter cup of white sugar and four parts water. And you just boil it in a saucepan until the sugar dissolves. You let it cool and you fill up your feeder and you have a pretty natural nectar for your hummies some cedar bird houses for our bird friends and these are pretty affordable so the $12.98 for the cedar house and this this time of year late winter is a great time to put up some bird houses so that they will be ready to go for your bird friends in the spring they're getting in all of their solar lights as well and they have some pretty ones here with some cutouts in them that would probably make a really pretty reflection or cast a really pretty design on walkways or patios. $9.87 for those solar, decorative solar lights. Look at this one here, a decorative garden lantern set. And it looks like you get um, four in a pack. They're 15 lumens, solar powered for $14.98. And you can see that there that I was describing on the floor, it casts a really pretty pattern. 
and these stylish gooseneck looking down lights. These are also solar powered and they're $14.48. That's what they look like outside the box. These are real pretty looking. They would look nice up and down a walkway. Some decorative flags for outside and these are $5.00. And lots of other type of outdoor lighting. They really do help set a nice ambiance outdoor. They have the string lights. They have some that are those LED strips, the rope lights up top there. They even look nice on deck railings. Right there. Linkable rope lights, 18 feet for $9.97. And some other garden decor. You have there that pelican. A little bit of a mushroom and some turtles as well as a gnome. And then they have some more down here, the gnomes with the sunflowers and the surfboard. And look at that cool little dude. It looks like a um, turtle that's ready to go to the beach. He's got his sunglasses and his hat on. $17.97 for that one. Now they're just starting to stock their planters here at my store, but they've been a great place, Walmart, for me to find some terracotta pots at a pretty affordable price point. Now they don't have any of the big ones out just yet, just some small ones. But you can see here, even this little one, um, if you wanted to plant like a small succulent or something, $1.58. And they also have some saucers. But this year I found that they have these really pretty clay pots that have a bit of a tan appearance to them. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And these are, let's see, $10.98 for the 8-inch planter. And the 10-inch is $16.24. They also have a 6-inch for $6.48. And they have matching saucers. Here are the matching saucers. And let's see, the 10-inch is $7.32. 8-inch is 6 dollars And the 6-inch is $3.67. Here's an 8-inch set put together. That pretty they feel really good quality too like a stone well, they're like a terracotta pottery material but I love the finish on them and here's some really pretty uh, planters with some feet they're those basket look rattan type planters I actually bought this one last year I have a tall Dracaena corn plant in it and it looks really pretty see that it has the feet it stands about 22 inches in height and it's about 13 inches in diameter and it's a plastic material so you don't have to worry about it rotting from like the moisture from the plant it also has a clear insert inside so when you put your plant inside you don't have to worry about it dripping soil or water onto your floor because there is a uh, that clear insert will catch all of that water so I really like it it's by better homes and gardens and it is 2484 all you have to do is screw the legs in and the legs are inside the planter there then there's this style here. This one looks a little bit smaller in diameter, 11.8 11 inches, and it stands about 19 inches in height. They would look pretty together, but this one you'll see your planter through it because it's clear, but that shows you the clear insert and the legs in there. Here's the black one, $29.97. It's really pretty. And here are some white planters. It's lots of different colors. I actually have a couple of this one right here. And I really like it. Oh, and I have that one too. I have the larger size, the smaller size, and I also have the larger and smaller of this one. This one's pretty. Almost looks like a rope pattern. $11.24 on that one. And here is where they have all of their fertilizers. Now they have some really great prices on these fertilizers. They have their house brand, which is the Expert Gardener, and there's different varieties. There's the Evergreen, a tree and shrub, the all-purpose plant food. They even have a tomato and vegetable garden one. And these are all $5.97, which is a great price. Um, some flower ones, Azalea Camellia Rhododendron. They also have some Dr. Earth products and Holly Tone, which is an Espoma product. So lots and lots of fertilizer options. Even rose food, I just noticed. They have a rose plant food. I actually need a new indoor plant fertilizer, so I am going to pick one of these up. Previously, I have used this one, but the pump on it hadn't been great, and um, I thought that I would just try something else. So I have heard good things about the Dr. Earth, so that's what I'm going to try today. I'm going to grab one of these, 
the Dr. Earth Pump and Grow Concentrated Indoor Plant Food. But they have lots of other options here as well. If you look up top there, they have the Tropical Plant Food um, by miracle Grow. They also have the Indoor Plant, the Succulent Plant, and something that I am gonna also pick up is this Osmoco. Now this is a granular type fertilizer and what's great about this is it's slow release. So you sprinkle it into the soil and every time that you water your plant, it's gonna slowly fertilize it. Now this is a two pound container and just recently I was over at Lowe's and these were about $18.98. And here, this is $13.68. And one of my all-time favorite fertilizers, the Alaska Fish Plant Food. I use this all the time in my vegetable garden with my dahlias, flowers, anything. The thing with this is that you do want to do this outside and it is really stinky but the plants respond really well to it and it is a wonderful fertilizer. It says that it's great for all indoor and outdoor plants. I wouldn't use it indoors unless it's spring and you can bring your plants outside to fertilize them. Um, made from fish, won't burn, it's a 511 and this here is a one gallon size for $23.97. But they also have the smaller container if you just wanted to give it a try and this here it looks like it's a 2.45 pound um, one quart container for $11.94. Goldstrom is a really great variety of Rudbeckia. It's really prolific. This one here says that it gets to be about 36 inches in height. $1.96 for this one. Here's a variety of amaranth that I've grown before. It's called Amaranth Love Lies Bleeding. What's really pretty about this is it has this really long fuchsia tendril type flower. It's really pretty and it looks great in things like floral arrangements with zinnias and dahlias because it kind of just drapes over the flowers and off the sides of the vase. Real cool one to arrange with. It gets to be three to five feet in height so it is pretty tall. 60 days to bloom. Look at this Cosmo, Summer Dream. Looks like a creamy white with a really pretty pink center. Gets to be 36 inches in height. And here's what I'm picking up today. Last year I found these bags of Earth Science Earthworm Castings. These are four pound bags for $6.24. And I planted um, my tomatoes and my peppers. I would put some of this in the planting hole and they seemed really happy. So what a great price. So I'm grabbing two of those. I need some fertilizer for my indoor house plant. So I'm grabbing this Dr. Earth Pump and Grow also a new watering can for my indoor house plants and I thought this was a great shape and size for $2.97 and some seeds. I'm going to pick up some Cosmos, Summer Dream and Seashells, some Alyssum, the white carpet of snow. I'm going to give forget me not to try this year so we'll see how that goes. I think they're going to be really beautiful very dainty spring flowers. Now hopefully I can get them going early enough to see a spring show out of those. And some sweet peas. I'm going to try these for the first time as well this year. I can't wait to smell them. Everyone says they smell wonderful. So I got two packs of those. The heirloom mix and the mammoth salmon cream. And I couldn't resist. Another type of sunflower, moonshine. This one's also a multi-branching. And it looks like it has double petals and this really pretty pale yellow. And a couple of other things. Some of the bonide rose rx, which I use in my garden. As well as some of the bonide copper fungicide. And lastly, I thought, why not grab a bag of this for $5.97, a tomato and vegetable garden plant food. I've used it before. I find that it works just as well as Job's and some other varieties. So that's my haul. Well, that brings us to the end of the spring planting inventory here at Walmart. I hope that you've enjoyed taking a look at all the seed starting supplies, as well as all of the selection of seeds that they have and some other gardening related items. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.